Captain hey. Dick Snyder, it's a guy's life. Not really. Welcome back to Bay Shop Talk Live, guys. It's good to see you. And also, happy St. Patrick's Day. I hope everyone's out there drinking responsibly, enjoying your St. Patty's Day with a nice cold green beer like myself. I'm at home, so I can have all the green beers I want. That's How's right. Going? As always with me is my guys that I like to call friends. I got Bubba with Bubba Outdoors. And Did somebody say 11 more. pounds? I think somebody said 11 pounds. 11 I pounds? I knew, 11 pounds. I knew it. It was going to happen. <laughs> see? see, Tim? You should have came with me. <laughs> Wait, what was that? I don't even remember what I was doing that day, to be honest with you. How's everyone doing? Is everybody out there enjoying their St. Patrick's Day? I hope you didn't have to go to work like I did today. Heck no. I went fishing all day. Didn't even catch a thing, so I should have went to work. I went out. Uh, I went fishing this morning. Uh, I was only out there two, three hours, and I caught three all in like the two pound range. But yeah, it was it was kind of on call for work myself. Uh, I was I was out there with a, a rod in one hand and a phone in the other. He's talking about fishing, guys. Yeah, <laughs> Trevor, what's going on, guy? What's going on, man? It's good to have you on the show, Big O. I knew you was going to make it, Big O. I'm glad you could join us. R Bishop twelve three ninety nine. I'm glad you're here. Sorry I didn't see your message, but hey, he's the one that won one of my uh, giveaways. So congrats to him. Oh, that's good. R Bishop's around for all of our stuff, so I'm glad it was him. Uh, Big O, thanks for the sub the other day. By the way, buddy, uh, I'm watching some of your videos. That was pretty cool. I got you back on the sub too. Appreciate it. I know we need to take a trip down his way and uh, do a little mangrove fishing. That'd be pretty cool, Bubba. I gotta get you in the salt water next. That's like the that's like the next thing. Yeah, I mean, it's let's do it. I I know how to saltwater fish. I've done it my whole life. Before this recent, I guess like last year, year and a half, that was all I did was saltwater fish. So let's let's do it. You know, when uh, when Joe took me saltwater fishing, he promised me a uh, sheep head, and uh, we ended up with trout. So we have yet to do that. We got to do that sometime. Uh, I think pretty soon they got the El Cheapo tournament coming up. If it it's it's already already. Yeah, it's already gone. It's already gone. I knew it was in March. I just couldn't remember when. Yeah, uh, it's already come and gone. I'm just ready for the water to get warm up, get the uh, redfish in here, the pompano. Any wheat now, uh, the Spanish mackerel should be in the surf. So I'm looking forward to that. They'll, this should be here. And I want to try to get the kayak, uh, do some beyond the breakers fishing over the surf for some Spanish mackerel. A lot oh, yeah. of people use Spanish mackerel as bait, but I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, they make good bait, but they're pretty tasty too in their own right. Oh yeah, that's, really that's good eating. We'll get to that though. We'll get to that. We get to the reports there. So yeah, guys, uh, this is the third episode here. Uh, thanks for coming again if you've already been here, and welcome if you hadn't. Uh, we are all three North Florida fishermen, Jacksonville, uh, but we try to talk about you know all kinds of fishing in general. Uh, if you have it, you know, obviously if you're here, you've probably watched one of our videos, go watch all three of them. Uh, sometimes we go together. Uh, sometimes we go separate. You get to see a lot of different styles of fishing and a lot of, uh, stuff from different angles. Uh, so it's pretty cool there. Um, yeah, if, uh, if you guys are chiming in for the first time or again, repeat guys, uh, comment, uh, we watch the chat as we're going here. There is a slight delay on the chat. Uh, so we might, you know, we'll, we'll see it. We'll get to it. Uh, but it might take a second to get to it. Uh, but tell us where you're from, what kind of fishing you're doing, any kind of questions you got, shoot them out to us. We will try to answer them. Uh, but what's, uh, let's on, on that saltwater kick there. Let's move into, uh, fishing reports. Uh, what you got, Joe? Uh, right now, like I said, the, the cold fronts we've been having up here, and that actually has been all across Florida. When I went down to Okeechobee, you could even feel it down there. Uh, the beginning of the month, we had like two weeks of warm weather, and that got the bass started kicking in. We had the full moon at the same time, and they were spawning. There was beds everywhere. You guys were finding beds. The bass in my pond were bedding. I had like eight of them on the beds there. But then the cold snap hit. We had like three days of uh, like down to the 30s. And that killed all the fishing. Like everybody that went saltwater fishing got got busted and couldn't catch anything. Uh, the bass in my pond moved back off the banks and went out deep. Uh, seems like the only person that did any good uh, when that cold snap hit was you, Bubba. I don't, I don't know how that happened. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, on saltwater, real quick before we get to that, uh, 
the the guys that I've talked to, the guys I know that do a lot of saltwater fishing, um, everything that they, they're starting to get rat reds in now. There's it's hard, hard, hard to find a slot red. Um, there's everything is still still out past at least out past the uh, the jetties uh with any size to it but i have heard a bunch of guys catching rat reds no slot reds at all um i have seen a few guys with drum show up and yeah whenever that uh whenever the spanish back mackerel bite is on it is on uh so that we will uh yeah that's that's worth hitting worth making a trip for that's uh Man, if you've never been in the middle of a Spanish mackerel run, it's it's throw something shiny out there and it's getting hit, and it is it is fun. If you use something like medium action or something, it is a good time. But yeah, uh, bass fishing, um, it's been it has been it's been up and down. Where we get like a few days of good, where if it warms up for like a week, it'll start to pick up, like it's gonna look like it's good, and then we get like a freaking cold snap again. It looks like this uh, today was about eighty degrees, which is it's that's warmer than it's been since mid February for us. Uh, water temp this morning, guys. When I was fishing, it started out sixty one. It warmed up to about sixty three by the time I got off of it, and that is crazy for mid March. It is usually much warmer than that by now. Uh, but yeah, it's really screwed with the spawn. Where I haven't seen, I've seen. We'll talk more about that later. I've seen uh, beds and ponds, but not in any kind of river, creek, or anything yet. But yeah, me and Joe, and if you haven't seen uh, the video of that one, oh boy. We went uh, somewhere south of Jacksonville, north of Lake George, and uh, <laughs> yeah, somewhere in between there. And uh, and I got my new PB, guys. I got a eleven point oh two pound largemouth bass. Uh, caught a, another little bass. Joe caught one bass. Caught a mudfish. But yeah, if it's gonna be a slow day, that's my kind of slow day right there. Uh, Tim, what are you seeing as far as uh, your fishing report here? All right, so pond hopping, um, I already told these guys earlier, but uh, today I actually went fishing with uh, Apex Bass and a few other people. Uh, they are on the beds. Um, we got the male on the bed. The female is just not too far behind, and, uh, you know, I guess they haven't spawned yet. There are some fingerlings, but they're probably just from other bass, but the ones that I was targeting, you know, no luck whatsoever. Um, last weekend, though, I went kayak fishing, and a huge pond, and I caught a six pounder. I was two pounds off from doing the trophy, uh, the trophy catch for Florida. I got a picture of it right here. If you guys haven't seen this video yet, go check out my uh, uh, spawn bass fishing video out of a kayak. Um, but other than that, guys, um, it is today was a really, really hot day. I didn't see a lot of bass on the banks. Um, but, you know, that's pretty much it. You know, this this temperature has just been really weird lately here up in North Florida. Yeah. Uh, Big O, thanks for telling us. Like down there in the Tampa area, apparently they're getting the rat reds down there around Tampa starting to come in. I know for us, uh, like Bob was saying, they're getting a few rat reds. But right now everybody's fishing off the jetties and they're catching those big giant bull red drums right now that everybody likes to have fun with catching and i think there's still some big black drum out there too uh i'm looking forward to it warming up and getting them in the only thing salt water that's inshore that's really liking this cold weather or the sheep set and uh the sea trout uh i don't know if the yellow mouth is still hanging around For some reason they have eluded me this year but also i need to get out of the kayak more uh big o good question uh big o asks how do you how do you change up for cold water bass fishing uh, usually when there's a cold snap like that, uh, big O, one of two things happen. Either they lock down onto like hard structure cover. And when I say hard structure, I mean like either uh, wood, timber, concrete, something like that. Something that's going to hold heat and they're going to feel secure or they're going to go deep. And they're going to school up real tight out deep. It's going to be harder to get them, but it, they're easier targets. They're not so spread out. It's almost like they're down there gathered up for warmth. I know that's probably not what they're doing, but that's almost seems what they do when it gets cold weather. And definitely and, fish a lot slower too. That's that's yeah. one of my, my things that I got to say about when it comes to getting colder because I'm from Kentucky. So uh, definitely fish a little bit smaller baits and fish them slow. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Was slow down. Uh, for me, it's all about you know finding that same kind of pattern what they're on, whether it's what type of structure they're on or if they're hanging out deep and slow down. Y'all, uh, you know, stuff like 
if it's shallow and they're on hard structure there, uh, pitching, flipping real slow, real lightweight. Uh, you almost got to hit them in the head with it. And then you, you almost dead sticking a lot of times uh, and real, real target casting. Once you dial in what kind of pattern they're on, if you could figure out what kind of structure it is, you might as well not even target other stuff. If, uh, if you're, if you're on a bite, but yeah, everything's slow and everything's tight. Speaking of figure things out and everything, Joe, tournament fishing, how did you figure them out when you're on Lake Okeechobee? Because that's a big chunk of water. Uh, basically, I just had to start from scratch. I just did a lot of Google Earth, but Google Earth really wasn't helpful because things have changed so much out on the lake. So uh, Friday, we went out. Uh, we, we ran out of the Kissimmee River out into the main, out into the main lake, and I still had boat issues. Uh, but it kind of handed us a good hand because uh, right at the mouth of the lake that emptied out, or out the mouth of the Kissimmee River that empties out the lake, uh, we just turned right to the first point, and I thought they were big gizzard shad just coming up, but it, it turned out to be yeah, there was gizzard shad, but it turned out to be there were bass feeding on those gizzard shad, and I had a new angler, he was new to tournament fishing, and I had a I told him, I said, throw a whopper. He had a whopper plopper tied on. I remember having a whopper plopper. Everything else was like worms or jigs and stuff like that. I said, throw your whopper plopper out there. And the first cast with a whopper plopper, he had a three-pounder, smashed it. But he, he threw the hook, sadly. And then uh, I had a rattle trap, threw that, and I caught three bass, like, back-to-back. -back, uh, two of them were two pounds, one were three pounds. I said, hey, let's leave them alone. I said, maybe they'll come back here tomorrow. Or if, even if they're not schooling, they're still going to hang out in this general area. Uh, so we hit it back in for safety reasons because, like I said, the boat wasn't operating right. Uh, Lake Shore Marine, if you guys are ever down in South Florida around uh, the north end of Lake Okeechobee and you have a boat problems, so I highly recommend Lake Shore Marine. They managed to squeeze me in there, uh, discharge me for you know just hourly costs, and they found a bunch of problems my previous mechanic left uh for me to find, I guess you could say. <laughs> and they got me taken care of, got me back out there on the water. And we went out Saturday morning, bright and early. It was actual tournament day. We went back to the spot where the bass were schooling. And I remember they stopped schooling at a specific time. I said, okay, well, we're going to fish, stay out here for 30 minutes. And once it gets past that time, if we don't catch a fish or they don't come up, then we're going to, we're going to press on. And, uh, the water was really dirty. It was like chocolate milk out there in the main lake. And everybody was finding clear water more way back in there where you can like almost get lost. Uh, so we, we headed into the small canal. There was a fellow in there. He was crappie fishing. It's, it's, people don't really fish it. I mean, like there was no one else fishing in there the whole time I was there. People were just using it to kind of get back and forth between the lock and the river. And I, what big O is a good question that you asked because that's what I was using for. I was, Took out the rattle trap because it was still early in the morning. I figured they wouldn't be up in the cover. They'd still be kind of roaming the canal. And I threw that rattle trap out as a search bait. It was blue and chrome, classic for down there in Okeechobee. I uh, got my first fish of the day on that, two-pounder. I was happy. Is The first one's always the hardest to get when you're tournament fishing. Uh, got him in the box, threw us some more, threw us some more. Guys, if you're throwing it for more like five or ten minutes and you're not getting any more bites or not seeing any more signs, it ain't happening, go to something else, folks. You have to move with the fish. They're going to come out as the light's low, and as the sun gets up, they're going to push closer and closer and tighter and tighter into that cover, be it weeds, cattails, lily pads, or whatever. They're going to hang out on the edge when the light's low, and as that sun gets up, they have to shade their eyes so they get back in there. Uh, so then I went to using a Gary Yamamoto Ica. It, it kind of looks like a uh, tube bait, but it's solid in the middle. It's not hollow. Went to flipping with that, hooked the, hooked the three-pounder. Also, guys, I'm working on this video as we speak. Uh, that should be up here in the next day or two of my day one tournament in Okeechobee. Hooked the three-pounder, kept flipping it, kept flipping it. It's a little four-inch bait, real finesse. I was just trying to get a limit real quick. Uh, got my other four fit. No, what was it? One, two. I got my other two fish on it, and then the sun got really high, and I just stopped getting bites. It just stopped. Like I said, if, if you're not getting bites and it's been more than 20 minutes, move on. Try something else. Think like think like the fish. So never punched before. Watched a lot of videos. Uh, 
So I had me an ounce and a half tungsten weight, had me a Bruiser Base Intruder on, saw some penny wart, which is like little, little dollar dollar pad weeds. Probably my second flip, had a bite, pull it out, and there's my fish number five. Got him out, happy as can be. Now it was time to upgrade. Uh, I caught, had a four pounder on. He got off in the high thins when I was punching. And then God threw me a curveball and the clouds came out. So there went the uh, cover or the, the, the high sun to get them up underneath those mats. And they came back out again. Well, I noticed them popping on the edge of the dollar weeds and they weren't hitting anything on the bottom. They were chasing minnows and shiners. So I used a weightless fluke. And as soon as I'd pull it off those dollar weeds, they would smash it. And I managed to upgrade two fish. Uh, my first day of weighing in was 10 pounds, 10.33 pounds which was good enough to put me in 10th place out of 27 people. Uh, but first place got first place got smashed with 21 pounds. Uh, fella had a seven and a six pounder and some other like two pounders killed it, killed it. And, uh, he went further South than I did. And he was punching all day. He got that punch bite real quick. Uh, day two was a lot harder. I went back to the canal. It rained the night before that cold rain coming in there. Just dropped the temperature so low where the fish just stopped. Uh, going down the canal the day before, you can see bluegills popping, bass hitting along the edge. It was just dead quiet. There's nothing going on. So we headed out there to the main lake, uh, threw some frogs. I lost some on a frog. My partner caught one. And then uh, we just started working down the bank, and I found some small cattails. I started throwing a swim bait and couldn't get bit. And then I saw another partner or another guy in the club fishing a tournament. And he caught a seven pounder, a three pounder, and a two pounder all right there in front of me. I said, what am I doing wrong that he's doing right? And we're both throwing the same bait. Like, guys, when you see me pick up a vibe tail worm and put it in my hand, it is tough times because that was my go-to bait. I feel like if I can't catch them on anything else, I can catch them on that. And what it was is there's big mats of lily pads that's really tight together and not all mats are created equal i don't know what it is but we worked our way down we must have went down 100 yards of mats till we finally found this one section that was probably like 50 by 80 feet and they were just all up in there busting shiners there's like a school of them in there and i caught my limit in like the last 30 minutes on a vibe tail just reeling over the top of those pads and they would bust that worm uh through the pads and I had it race back. I only got weighed in like eight pounds that day, but I was happy to at least turn in at limit. So it's just going out searching. And the best thing I, that I can tell you is, is go somewhere that you think that looks good, that has what the bass need, and just sit there for a minute. If you don't hear any activity, move on to the next spot. Because they'll let you know if they're there. You'll hear bluegills popping. It'll sound like Rice Krispies. You know, there's that little <laughs> popping around. Our bass will be busting. That's where you want to actually focus your time on. If you're not hearing anything, there's no birds working, you don't hear any sounds, just go ahead and hit on out of there. All right. Um, our next topic, um, hopefully that video, by the way, comes out here pretty soon. Uh, you said you were working on it. I'm pretty sure we're all anxious to see what it looked like on uh, Okeechobee. Um, the spawn. Uh John, let's start with you. What um, what are some good spawning locations and lake spawning versus river spawning? You're you're pretty familiar with that. Well, uh, you know, it's it's always going to be somewhere bass don't don't typically don't like to see each other when they spawn, uh, so they'll spread out a bit. But you're looking for protected areas. Um, you're going to look for little coves, little dents in the shoreline, um, stuff where somebody's got a little, you know, canal dug or boat ramp dug if you're on a lake or if it's uh, if your river, something is tidal, you want to be looking around for the same kind of thing. Little little bends in the river uh, that's going to create, you know, calm spots in there close close to cover uh, up in the backs of creeks, like little feeder creeks and stuff. A lot of times way up in the back of them, um, they're going to look for stuff that's got you know, if you're looking at uh, like your your graph on something like a lake, you're going to be looking for areas that, that have staging areas next to it. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff out there on like YouTube if you're looking for information on spawning. But if you're looking at the pattern of how they go through the spawning, where they'll start to move up, they'll move up into these staging areas, these flats and stuff, uh, you know, that 
where they they start loading up and feeding real hard and it's going to be close to where they spawn at and if you really learn how to read like your graphs and stuff like that you can pick out blind almost on a body of water you never fished where the spawn's going to be uh but and if it's uh if it's stuff like this tidal and it's flowing then you're going to look for breaks in that and then it's going to be you know all the time if there's a breaking current if it's a calm spot that's kind of sheltered that's where they're going to be at it's going to be somewhere you know the water clarity is definitely going to have an impact on how deep it is. Uh, if it is, you know, tannic water, stained water, like we have up here, it's going to be, uh, you know, a lot more shallow. It seems like than if you're on some of these real crystal clear lakes that have a lot of vegetation in them that cleans the water out real well. They're not dealing with the, you know, all the the overhanging trees and stuff that we got that make the water real tannic. It's going to be a little bit deeper there. Um, so yeah, it's a. Uh, it's been a weird, weird spring for spawn. I'm expecting the next full moon is uh, is going to be at the beginning of April, into March, beginning of April. Um, and I'm expecting it's probably going to turn on then because it's it's usually would have happened. You, you know, we saw everything start to get on beds and nothing really happened because it got warm right around a full moon. And then as the full moon hit that night was bam, cold front. So that that pushed everything back off. Um uh, Pond near, near, near me over here has got some some fry in it, so somebody got something done, but not much, not a whole ton, a lot of beds in there. Uh, so it's probably this next full moon is probably going to turn them on if it doesn't happen before then. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of a uh, lot of options on 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 lures for spawn too. Um, you know, one of my biggest things for fishing the spawn is I like something that stands up. Uh, whether it's you know fishing a worm, fishing a crawl, or fishing like a even like a swim bait. Um, I like something that's got like a nose weight to it. So it'll, it'll nose down and look like it's nosing down in that bed. And that's what seems for me to trigger that, uh, you know, that pick it up. Uh, you can sit there and mess with them and, and, and tick them off enough to where they pick it up, move it and hook them like that. Or if it looks like something is in there feeding and they're getting after their eggs, then that's where it seems to, you know, be a lot quicker, uh, method of, of bed fishing for me. That's, uh, anything that, that stands up, is is what i like to use for for bed fishing what about you guys uh actually a drop shot rig works really well because instead of pulling it through their bed you're keeping it in one spot and you can just dabble it in and out of their bed so it looks like it's feeding and it's right there in front of their face the whole time you know until they get angry enough to bite it and if you can find something that looks like a fluke or you know something that imitating a bluegill something that's going to eat their eggs that works even better. Um, was it Big Bites has what they call the war mouth? It's perfect for that. You can just put on like a 316 ounce weight, throw it out just past the bed, and that way you're not spooking them. You're not dropping it right on top of their head. Work it in, work it in, and just let it fall down, pop it up. Let it fall down, pop it up. And you're, you can just sit there and tap your rod and just make it jiggle. That way you're not repeatedly just throw them back into the bed back into the bed back into the bed you can throw it in there once and just leave it in there and just work it in one spot until you can find that sweet spot because for some reason i don't know if it's where their eggs are and you know our eyes aren't good enough to see it but certain spots of the bed seem to trigger them more than any like different spots like the left side may be where they lay their eggs and if you get a little closer to that they're going to be more aggressive than if you were on the outside of the right you know that's that's my theory is that's probably where their eggs at because i've noticed the same thing where you can drag it through you know the middle of it they just kind of swim around a little bit you get their attention you drag it through the right side of it nothing happens but you hit that sweet spot and they pick it up and move it immediately or they you know they key in on it right away so that's my theory on it too is uh it's probably where their eggs are but yeah there's definitely a sweet spot to beds uh where if you hit the right spot so if you're working a bed pitch around at different angles coming into it. Try different speeds sometimes too. If you're not doing something like what Joe Shane with drop shot, uh, it seems like sometimes if you just drag it in real slow, uh, you know, you'll get their attention. You'll see them looking at it, but sometimes if you burn something through there real fast, they'll get it. Or sometimes it's the opposite. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely a pattern to it. It seems like there's a sweet spot and then sometimes they like it the same way when you guys are bed fishing too. Um, you can tell, almost immediately whether that fish is going to bite or not because there's sometimes you could sit there and work on the same bedding fish for 30 45 minutes and she's never going to bite uh but you can tell almost right away um and if you uh if you get close enough to spook them off and they come back pretty quick that's uh that, that's that's a fish that's going to eat 
Uh, if they, if the, you can tell by how much attention they're you're paying to what you're dragging through the bed. If they're keying up on it fast and watching everything it does, that fish is going to hit it, uh, or at least pick it up and move it. So yeah, you can you can tell almost immediately whether it's a bed worth working on or worth you know skipping coming through a couple times and then moving on to the next one. Good deal, uh, Tim. Have you got any on beds so far? Have seen any on beds of, as of lately? You know what? Yeah, I found them today. Uh, I literally threw everything. Uh, I tried throwing a jig, but you know that was actually a good idea that you said, Joe, about the whole drop shot thing, keeping it in their face. Because what I noticed is that every time I would throw the jig a little bit past the bed, it would scoop the mom, but she would come back, and the dad would look at it, and then the dad would take off. But like you said, it's a little bit too low to the ground, so a drop shot might actually keep it up a little bit. So that, that's a good idea. I tried throwing a bunch of other stuff, though. Um, I tried swimming a worm, you know, trying to keep it up in the water column, maybe halfway through. But they just kept getting spooked. So to be honest with you, as far as an idea for what to throw during the spawn, um, I would I would say go ahead and use a drop shot. I haven't tried it yet, but, I mean, that's – You know that's what? A, I didn't even think about it until he asked you if you've caught any off beds. I was thinking about one that I caught off a bed. One of my favorite things to throw during a spawn on a bedding fish is uh, either like a lizard or like a brush hog. Uh, and I think it triggers like salamander response. They think it's a salamander and they're eating after their eggs. Uh, but that's one of my favorites to do on it, like a brush hog or a lizard. Hey, go, man. Sorry you got to run on us, but uh, we appreciate you tuning in. We hope to see you on the next one, man. You take care and have fun out there tonight, but be careful. Later on, big O. Musky hands or Hans. What's up, man? I'm going to go with Hans on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Hans. Oh. I don't know about Musky, man, but we got Jax. <laughs> right. That's uh, it's our pike cousin. Yeah, that's our uh, <laughs> southern pike, a.k.a. the chain pickerel. We need to do an episode where that's what we go after is just chain pickerel. Like, go yeah. to Samson's Lake and see what's the biggest chain pickerel we can catch. I'm in. I was looking at, uh, you know, just, just looking through. I was looking through the trophy catch stuff, which I'd like to talk about in a minute anyway, not just because I would like to talk about that big old fish again, uh, but because it's a really cool program. Uh, but I was looking through the, uh, like, the listed trophy catches, like, which, you know, lakes are producing the biggest fish and the biggest numbers. And I was looking through Lake Samson. I was thinking, man, I'd like to go out there and do some chain pickerel fishing. So I'm, I'm in, man. I'm in. Let's do you, it. you definitely got to do it before summer or else it'll just top out with hydrilla. Uh, guys, if you're familiar with Lake Samson slash Rowell, uh, it's great fishing during the springtime, but as soon as summertime gets you, it gets so thick with hydrilla, you just, you can't even move through it. it you pretty much just, it gets to the point where it's almost as bad as having an airboat. But uh, first thing in the year, though, is it's a good fishing lake. Uh, there's, you're going to get a lot of chain pickerel. You're going to get a lot of buck bass, but there are some nice bass inside there. What, musky Hans, you've never caught a chain pickerel before? Well, considering I think the world record is only seven pounds, and you're, you probably use that for musky bait. So <laughs> don't worry, you're not missing out. Yeah, it's like a small pike. It's that's what it is, like a small pike. They're uh, they're a cool fish. Uh, most people around here consider them junk fish, uh, but they're pretty cool. All right, uh, Tim. I know you're. You was asking us earlier today about getting uh, a battery for your de fish finder on your kayak. How's that coming along, man? So I actually ordered them today, and uh, when I actually messaged you guys about what can I use to keep the transducer inside the hull of the kayak. It turns out that Garmin actually makes an in-hole kayak transducer mount. And it's just this foam that's already cut out for the size of the transducer. So I ordered that, and it was actually cheaper than, uh, what did you call it, uh, duck, duck seal. seal. Yeah, duck so it's actually, duct tape. it's actually cheaper than that. It was like two or three bucks cheaper than duct tape or duck seal, damn it. <laughs> How uh, how's how, like how's it hold the styrofoam down onto the kayak? Those like sticky on one side or something? Do I know? Uh, the styrofoam, like you said, or the the foam that you said the transducer sits in. How does it stick to the bottom of the kayak, or you know, on the inside of the kayak? Is it like sticky on one side, like double sided tape or something? You know what? I have no idea. Um, it just I actually watched an iCast video. I think it was 2016 where they were demonstrating it. Uh, they just had extra glue because it had the kayak vertical. Uh -huh. um, 
I don't really know how it looks, but when I get in the mail, it should be in by Monday. I'll uh, I'll let you know. We'll do a uh, install video on that so everybody else can see it. And those maybe they're, you know, they got maybe they got those the little bananas like you got and uh, want to do the same <laughs> kind of install. I know, you know like, that's like the number one thing. I did not even put my kayak in the water until I got my fish finder installed on that. And that's probably like my most viewed video is uh, my fish finder install. So far, like all the upgrades I have on my kayak, which make life a little bit more comfortable, is the uh, hinge kit, the hydraulic hinge kit, where all I got to do is just pop the buckle and the hinge will just automatically lift up so I can get in there and get my gear, you know, be it camera batteries or baits or fish grips or whatever. But, oh, yeah, I don't have to reach my fish grips anymore because I got the holster right there next to my side. And uh, I, were, I opted for the ram mount uh pole holders instead of the scotty i mean they're a little bit better but i can angle them so much better in so many more different ways and uh place them and i like being able to stick them out to the side and troll which uh, a lot of you guys that watch my saltwater videos know that's how i catch a lot of my sea trout i'll put a much uh, mud minnow on each rod and i'll just troll around the deep holes until i get a bite and once i get a bite i'll stop anchor up uh, and fish there and which brings us back to the fish finder i got the uh lorance elite four and a lot of other guys have videos where they put the kayak or put their battery inside their console i didn't like that i wanted to be able to have all the room for my gear and tackle in there so i moved the battery to the actual inside of the kayak and then i got lucky and found this nice little uh free display i don't know where what you call it i know it has like a three hole display kind of has a uh, display your voltage uh this cigarette lighter to power your fish finder and two usbs to charge up your battery or whatever i'm gonna try to play around with that uh for up upcoming mods uh to keep my battery life kind of like a, a tender battery tender i want to see if i can wire a solar panel a 12 volt solar charger to where it'll go back into my battery and keep charging my battery like if i don't have my fish finder on that way, since you know you're out there fishing in salt water or open water, you're in the sun all day anyway. My might as well put it to use and have it charge your uh, battery back up in your kayak. And uh, summertime's coming up. Something else that I want to try doing my kayak is uh, if you go on Amazon or eBay, they have those LED strips, and you get them whatever color, or you can even get them with a remote if you want to be real fancy. But I want to. Underneath the kayak, there's two spots that's made for uh, to help you track better in the water that are kind of like sunk into the kayak. Well, I wanted to take those strips and either glue them or put them up underneath there so I can do night fishing. You're kind of like your own floating dock light. You know, right. I'm under, you can just turn it on and now you got green lights. And plus, this is also a good safety feature because, you know, a big green glowing light, uh, uh, I would really hope. If there's a boat out there that they, they wouldn't want to run into this big giant green glowing light thinking that you know they can clearly see you you ever see those old school uh like they're called like a fishing light uh but it's two gator clamps uh that you clamp on your battery and toss it in the water it floats and the lights on the bottom of it yeah yeah i know a lot of people use those for uh crappie slash speckle perch fishing which is what we call them down here and they work really good they attract the bait fish and you know and of course the predator fish come over and uh that's what I was going to try to do. And also, you can take those green lights and you can get a piece of PVC, wrap them around the PVC, and then get two end caps and some clear tubing. Put the PVC in the clear tubing to put the end caps on, silicone it up real good. And then, like what you said, Bubba, you can like put a weight on the end and hang it over the side, and that'll work too. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the little fishing light like that, that I got with the little gator clips, it's got a rattle in it too, so you can think about something like that too. Yeah. What's uh? So what's next for you, Tim? I know you're working on getting your fish finder put on there. Any other things that you uh, want to add? Yeah. So uh, what? Actually, I don't think I've actually told anybody what kind of uh, fish finder I just got. Uh, I just bought a Garmin Striker Four, I believe it's called. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how I'm actually going to put it on there, and I just got off of Amazon, and actually all of my stuff is going to be here Monday. So I'm going to start that video this week. And, uh, yeah, I'm super excited about it. That's pretty much the only mod I got right now. Anything, what, like, what do you want to add for the summertime fishing? Like, I know you got to get some rod holders on that thing, like what I got. Do you have tracks on the side of your kayak or no? I, 
I don't have tracks. I'm thinking about doing that, but I actually have an ingle cooler with four rod holders on the cooler. So I always keep that in the back if I need more rods. Uh, when it comes to fishing with more rods, they do kind of get in the way. That's only my issue. So luckily with Vibe and how they have it, uh, I've, I've seen Joe's kayak. He, he has a Vibe. Uh, my Vibe's got a really deep hole. So um, I can just set them like along the sides, and I can still stand up and have plenty of room. So what you um, need some bullhorns for. Exactly. So right. what that's, that's I'm the hoping right right there. I need some kind of anchoring system. It, it makes me mad that I don't have some kind of anchoring system or a power pole system. I'll tell you what I did. That's uh, that's probably my favorite mod that I've done to mine. I've got rod holders and and crap like that on it. But what I did with mine is I did a, you know, it's pretty simple, but like an anchor trolley. Um, you get two. You see the different kind of anchor cleats. Um, and I've got ones that that slide a little bit better. Uh, it's got a little more grip to it. Uh, and ran some paracord. Got a stainless steel uh ring that's two inches wide. Uh, and put it on a on an anchor trolley so I can slide it back and forth. Uh, it's really good for like Joe was talking about finding you know deep water holes and stuff like that. You could pop off like that. Uh, but with that ring, what I did too is um, I've got you know a long piece of PVC. A lot of guys use like garden stakes and stuff, but I'll use that as my power pole. I'll stick it down through that ring, and uh, and and that's my redneck power pole on the kayak is is run that down through the anchor trolley and and with the trolley instead of having you know something tied onto a cleat or something like that you can slide it back and forth depending on the current so you're facing the right direction that way you can anchor off the front anchor off the back and then you don't have to move around so much to figure out you know i gotta pull up my anchor in the front or turn around get my anchor off the back i just slide it over to me right there beside where i'm sitting at pull it up put it down right there and then slide it whichever direction i need it so yeah it's a pretty easy uh, get you a couple cleats, some paracord, stainless steel ring, and uh, get you a nice little anchor trolley going. I'd, I'd use that all the time. If uh, salt water and freshwater. If I'm on a whole freshwater and then fish a tidal, uh, and I'll do the same thing there. But yeah, salt water especially. Uh, See, if I'm hitting, you just taught me something because I never thought about taking a garden spike and sticking it through my anchor trolley and using it as like a stick up pole. Uh, it's a so little something we need to do. It's a little stiffer than like PVC. Uh, you know, it doesn't bend so much whenever you're getting blown around with it. Uh, you can get like an eight foot guard stake from, uh, you know, any guard center, Home Depot, Ace Hardware or whatever. And it, they're pretty, pretty sturdy, pretty firm. Uh, so it'll, it'll keep you, you know, in place a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, it's awesome for stuff like, you know, Joe, you've been out there, I think, one time, but I'll go fish Mill Cove all the time. And whenever I hit a spot where I know where some oyster beds are and I want to work those oyster beds real well, I'll just pop that pole down and, uh, and and work all around it. And then whenever I want to pick up and move somewhere else, just slide that anchor trolley down and drift on wherever I'm going. But uh, it's, it's pretty, you know, as far as, like, usable kayak mods that you get a lot of benefit for something cheap, that is that is up there. Bubba, you won't believe what question uh, Trevor just asked. He asked, he said, uh, what is your personal best bass? I'm going to let you answer that one live first. <laughs> well, uh, I just caught my PB. Uh, new PB. Yep, new PB. Uh, yeah, before that, it was uh, 8, 6, 7 before that. And uh, and me and Joe went out uh, trying to hunt some spawning bass, but we got on some a big old pre-spawn girl. Um she was 11.02 caught her on a three eighths ounce chatterbait um with a baby bass fluke trailer and she was you know big old beat up short stocky girl oh man it was i set the hook on it yeah we were kind of out in the middle we were working docks we hadn't got into uh any grass or anything yet that was our what we were going for is we we're working our way towards some grass we were checking to see where there used to be lily pads but they got blown out uh so we were working down in between uh, in between some docks. It was just sand bottom. It was probably, what, nine foot deep or something like that. If and, that. Uh, yeah, if that. And I was on the uh, the back of the boat and working, waiting to get up to the next dock, just throwing out in the middle of, of between two docks that were probably, you know, 30 foot apart. And then she was right out there in the middle. I let it uh, – threw it out i was watching the video on it to try to see what depth she was at and uh i threw it out let it let it sit all the way sink to the bottom and it was just kind of medium retrieve foot or two off the bottom uh set the hook on it man i thought i was hung up it felt like 
like whenever you know you hit a stick and set the hook real hard, you can feel it drag towards you just a little bit, um, but no real head shake or nothing like that. Whenever I first set the hook, and I, I thought I was hung up, uh, <laughs> and then uh, then it started moving, and you know she didn't. Uh, I must have had the drag crank down tight. She didn't pull any drag or anything. She jumped a couple times, and uh, old Joe was was money on the net there, and. Yeah, the uh, we we got into 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 the trophy catch. That was my first part of chasing the slam on it. Uh, but yeah, that's my my new PB two weeks ago, eleven point oh two. You can go check out that video either on my channel or Joe's or both. Uh, Big O watched yours first and then went and watched mine and was like, "Oh man, she looked even bigger on yours." So yeah, it's pretty cool to see different angles on it. Uh, but yeah, you can see that video on both of ours, eleven point oh two. Yeah, my camera angle, I apologize for that. It sucked. I had it down too far. So what sucks if you use a head mount, you're not really sure what you're looking at because you can't look through the camera. And uh, Scotty, that's Scotty Outdoors. Man, that's really nice of you to offer that help with him. Uh, I mean, that's really cool. That's what I love about the fishing community. Uh, a lot of times we'll help each other out. There's really no negativity you know, well, among us unless there's tournament and money on the line. But uh <laughs> Well, we're still uh, pretty civil most of the time. Scotty, I'm actually kind of watching it right now. So <laughs> I do appreciate you doing that, too. I'm just checking out, like, how you're doing this kind of stuff. That, that's awesome, man. This webcast is so boring. Tim's watching YouTube videos. Sorry, Tim, we don't involve you enough. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, so you guys, <laughs> Bubba, Tim, you ready? This weekend. Right. This weekend's the big trip, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can't wait. It's – uh. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun all the way around. Even if uh, we get get after what we're after or not, it's gonna be a fun time. Right. So we're It'll be going the first time that all three of us will be fishing together in kayaks. And Bubba, right. I've never fished with you kayak fishing. It's always been in some boat. Yep, always been in a boat. And uh, so if you guys have been paying attention to us, we uh, we're doing like a basically like a year long thing. Or if we get it done before that, you know. But uh, so the the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission has a thing they call. Uh, uh, well, they have a bass slam, you know, they have a trophy catch program or big catch program. Um, it's basically, it's like a citizen scientist kind of thing. So what they're doing is they're recording all these weights, lengths, girth of, uh, of big fish to get an idea on, uh, you know, basically getting on collecting all the data so they can do, you know, fish surveys, but using us to do it, using the anglers to do it. And, you know, it's incentive based, um, so they're, you know, they're giving out all kinds of prizes and different tiers for it. So we're making like a year long thing called, and we're calling it chasing the slam. We're chasing the bass slam this year. Um, and so with this, uh, coming up, this, this coming up weekend, next weekend, we're going, uh, to the Santa Fe river, uh, chasing Swanee bass, uh, because that is the only reliable place to catch them. They're only in a few different spots, period. Um, you know, up in they have a few up in uh, where those rivers extend up into Georgia, and they're listed like endangered in those kind of areas. Um, but overall, it, it is not a lot of these fish, and uh, we're we're going chasing after them this this next weekend. We're gonna make a uh, couple day trip out of it, camping and kayaking on the Santa Fe River. Yeah, hopefully you guys should eat that up. Me and uh, Bubba are gonna be the tough guys, and we're gonna be sleeping in a hammock. We're gonna be going hardcore. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to last when it's like 40 degrees. I don't know. Bubba might find his way into my hammock. I might find my way into his just for warmth. Cause, uh, or we're all both going to crawl into Timmy's tent. I, hope I already got a tent in the truck. I already got a tent in the truck, man. I'm uh, I'm, I'm not spooning with the three of y'all. This isn't, uh, <laughs> you if you ever, got, uh, ever saw that movie without a paddle, this ain't it. This That's ain't exactly it. what it my thought of when I just said that. <laughs> Saying it, I got, <laughs> I got a tent, I got a warm sleeping bag, and I got a paddle. Right, Do you guys. Because uh, Denver Outdoors said uh, earlier about how spawning works, and when it gets colder, uh, two of them just get close together for warmth. So you guys heard it, Bubba Outdoors and Denver Outdoors are going to be spawning. No, we're not that close of friends. Spooning uh, or spawning? Spooning. <laughs> But well, it should be a good time. So this is the first time I've ever done like a kayak camping trip, and we're going to definitely show you guys even the camping side of it. At least I know I am on my channel. Oh yeah, uh, I'll bring the good. I'll bring the good camera. We'll show you how uh, camp set up. We're probably going to head down there Friday evening. All of us get off of work, and we're going to fish all day Saturday and fish uh, Sunday morning. Probably till about lunch, and then head on back to the house. Hopefully with our heads high and 
you know, all three of us accomplishing our goals, all three of us catching the Swanee bass in the uh, size that it has to be. And they're not very big, so uh, we're going to be using smaller lures. The, the uh, Florida record slash world record is like 3.89 pounds, if I'm correct, at least 3.8 pounds. So that's, that's not a very big species of fish, but they're very beautifully colored, though. They're really pretty fish. They got, like, you guys have them. Yeah, like, they have like a teal color. They have like tiger stripes. Like they got stripes all the way down to their belly. Uh, they're really, really pretty fish. And if those guys that watched that video where I bought the 125 gallon tank and I asked you what it was going to be, we had one guy guess it after I dropped some pretty big hints. And uh, it's the Swanee Bass. I'm probably not going to be able to bring one home from this trip, so I'm going to, have to make my own special trip back down there once I get the tank set up. And I'm going to put a swanee bass in the 125-gallon tank because everybody on YouTube, like all the fishing channels, have largemouth bass. And I wanted something different. And, you know, not everybody has a swanee bass in their aquarium. And I think they look very, very beautiful. And that's what I wanted. Plus, uh, Miami, you go catch a peacock. It's too far to drive. That's this is we're going Joe and this tank Tuesday. No. <laughs> no uh, tank we'll Tuesday. He's what just going to be in the background chilling like the bluegills are now. So also, I'm sure the bluegills are going to be looking forward to moving to a much bigger home. Did uh, you name? The, did you I name the bluegills? I did not. My girlfriend did. She's the one that named them. She asked <laughs> so, me, "Did they have names?" I said, "No, they do not. Their names are fish." And yep. she said, uh, "We got to give them names." And she named them for. This is how cool a girlfriend I got. She named them after the Earps. You have Wyatt, James. Uh, Virgil and Morgan. That's good. So she, she named them after the uh, all the herbs. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then uh, she's got well, she went cool on the bluegills, but the dollar sunfish she named Bubbles because he has blue cheeks. Uh, oh, uh, Lord. So she she dipped off on that one. So uh, what do we need, here? You, honey? Don't be mad. <laughs> we need a pound and a half, right? Uh, for a swanee bass, we need a pound and a half. I think they have to be fifteen inches. 15 inches or, or 1.5 pounds. Right, whichever comes first. Right. And uh, when I catch one, I'm going to let the subscribers name him. I'm okay. not going to name the fish. I'm not going to let her name him. I'm going to let the subscriber and have, have a contest. And whoever gets the most thumbs up, you know, on a name, that's who's going to, that's what we're going to name him. What's so, the, uh, what's the size for the, the slam on the largemouth? Uh, since you and me have got one already and Tim's the only one slacking on that, it's either 24 inches. Or eight pounds, whichever. Uh, I'll just make it sure, out. making sure eleven pounds work. That's all. Pretty sure eleven pounds is over qualifying, so you're good on there. Okay, uh, eleven pounds. Hopefully, I catch one. Reading up, oh, man, I need an eight pounder like tomorrow. Well, you're not going to get an eight pounder down there in the Swanee. I'm sorry to tell you. That's one thing, guys. In these little rivers, it's really hard for bass have to work a lot more. You know, fighting the current, so they burn more energy and they don't grow as big. Now, largemouth, there'll probably be some, like, you know, largemouth about three or four pounds. But uh, the odds of catching an uh, eight pounder in fast moving water are very, very, very slim. Uh, for Swanee bass, same way, all the research that we've done on them, they're a lot like a Florida smallmouth. Where's uh, Musky Hans? You in here, man? I hope you're still here. But they're, they're a lot like a smallmouth where, when I say that, they have a smaller mouth, they don't grow as big. And their main forage is not really uh, prey fish. Their main forage is crawfish or crawdads or whatever you want to call them. So this is the main bait, type of bait that we'll be using. And I got I, I got a different kind of variety, so I'm going to throw. Uh, this is a bruiser bait, it's crazy crawl. It has where this is a little bit more aggressive bait. The legs click, kick, and swim because it's got these edges on it. Uh, if I wanted to go something a little bit smaller, you have a culprit in Creta Slim, which is you notice the pattern here. It's like a crawfish color. And then uh, something I got turned on to in uh, Lake Okeechobee are the Gambler's BB Crickets. And these are a great little punching. Uh, well, when I say punching, I mean like, you know, penny wart and hythens and thick mats. This is a great punching bait because it's so slender and so little, it will go right through that stuff with no problem. And also if the uh, big bass are finicky and they don't want a big bulky bait, this is like a little potato chip snack for them. And then something I used in the pond today, which also is a good crawfish imitation, are tubes, if you can't find anything. Uh, this one was like some off-brand I, I got like a long time ago at Gander Mountain, if that shows you how long ago that was. It was called Chompers. Maybe someone out there can explain this to me. Why is it every pack of tubes 
forget worms, everything else. It seems like it's just tubes seem to have a heavy, heavy coating of sea salt. Like I'm talking instant high blood pressure for a bass if he takes a bite out of it. Like this thing right here was just covered. It was like almost white with salt when I took it out of the bag. And Bubba has a bag of zooms. The zooms are young, Bubba. Nah, these are zooms. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that there, but these things are absolutely covered in salt. Right, salt it doesn't seem what matter the brand is. They're all covered in salt. Someone can answer that question for me, actually. I'd really appreciate it. Um, but like, like I said, just if, for targeting swannies, and even when we go after the shoal bass, and the, uh, we want to use a crawfish kind of pattern lure. Uh, Tim, I know Tim, he, he'll, he'll get a short attention span, and he'll want to go catch a, uh, those two-pound largemouth one after another over in the grass. But me and Bubba, we're, we already got our largemouth, and we're hard after it, and we're going to go after the swannies. So I got a, a tip for you guys on uh, if you if you guys do fish with crawl imitations because Joe said crawl color. Well, crawls, uh, you know, they'll molt and they'll change color all the time. Um, so here's my tip because me and Tim were talking about this the uh, yesterday. Um, if you do catch a crawfish that uh, you or I mean a crawfish feeding bass, if you catch a bass that you know you always look in their mouth, you can a lot of times see the tail end of something sticking out. Um, you know, whether it's bait fish or crawfish, you'll see pinchers sticking out of it. Uh, so take a look at the claws on the crawfish and try to match that color. If you're trying to match whatever crawfish color it is, check, look in the, the mouth of those bass and see, look for some claws sticking out. And that's to try to cut the color you want to try to match because they will, the you know, crawfish will change colors. Uh, you know, it's not often depend on where you're at but yeah they will change colors um so yeah try to match that hatch you know everybody thinks crawfish and crawfish is always you know crawfish color is either red or green uh but yeah take a look at uh a, a, in the mouth of what you catch and try to try to find some pinchers try to match that color what's the all you see is whiskers not too far away <laughs> no the only thing you see is whiskers i don't know you're screwed then <laughs> don't pull it don't try to pull them out of his mouth but hey guys, about I know whiskers. Like Talk about whiskers. Really what I'm going to use is a uh, crazy leg sugar crawl. I don't know if you guys are familiar with those because it's got the little whisker looking deals. Okay, yeah, that's that cool. Uh, probably start out with an eighth ounce weight and then we'll move up if the current's even rougher. And you bring your stakeout bowl, definitely. Yeah. And we're not fighting the current the whole time. Guys, I know there's like all three of you guys watching right now. Man, I know we picked a heck of a day to do this. It's Saturday, St. Patrick's Day, everybody's out. Barbecuing, it's a great day outside, eat, cooking with your friends. Please share the video. Please, you know, check out our channels. We're trying to grow this space shop talk. We'd love to get like, you know, like 20 of you guys in here just asking questions. We'd like an interactive crowd. So feel free to, you know, chime in anytime with questions if, as soon as the mood hits or just say what's up. You know, we love hearing from y'all. Yeah, tell us uh, where you're from. Um, you know, that's uh, we, we like like getting back and forth with you guys. Uh, you guys, yeah, have any questions or anything like us? Uh, shoot that out. I FYI, I am aware that mine is uh, the first few minutes of mine had an audio issue. I did fix it now, obviously, uh, but I'm going to go re-download Joe's after this and upload it as a separate but different video and delete this one. So I'll have a fixed version up. Uh, but yeah, share it. We're trying to trying to get this to be a thing. Awesome. Uh, there was a problem you guys like more so what's that <laughs> it said and also let us know which one of us googans they like more oh do not use that term me and bubba are so anti-googan <laughs> you're, you're fixing it you're fixing to get kicked out of the bait shop man <laughs> no. i like you guys you're likable be a two-man show yeah it's fixed to be a two-man show I'm just sitting around drinking coffee or <laughs> in this case green beer all right so while we're we're talking about the slam, uh, and green and, and the FWC making an incentive based, I want to tell you guys about this. I'm not sponsored by these people. I'm not on their pro staff, but as part of me catching that big old bass and getting in the trophy catch, I got a big old seventy five dollar discount in the weight category that I was in for Enigma rods. Uh, I got a seven foot medium heavy. It's got uh, some like semi micro guides to it. Pretty cool little guides. Um, I don't know what the insert is, but it's stainless. Uh, it's got a pretty fast tip. This thing is is graphite, super sensitive. I like this rod. This will probably not be my last Enigma rod. Uh, for a hundred dollars is what this thing retails at. 
Uh, you know, I got it for $75 off. They jack you on shipping on it. Um, nice grips to it. Pretty good. I like the pistol grip. It's a uh, blank through. Um, nice grip on the end of it. Uh, hook keeper is absolutely useless. Yeah, who Use the heck put the hook there? It's useless. Uh, but the rod itself, the blank, I'm a fan of it. It's uh, some 30-ton graphite blank. And for a hundred dollar rod, it's super sensitive, super light. Uh, it's got a good tip to it. I really like this thing. That's probably not going to be my last Enigma rod. Like I said, not sponsored by them, not on their pro staff, uh, but I like it. But what, that, what you talk to us about the reel you got on too? That's a new reel too, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I put a um, a Cast King Royale Legend on here, um, and you know for the uh, for the price, you know, because you, you kind of have to watch like reviews on YouTube and stuff. You don't know what those people are using normally. Uh, you don't know what, you know, if they're sponsored by them, if they got the real free, anything like that. Uh, I'm not again, nothing to it. Um, for the price of that, it's $40 real 38 bucks or whatever. Uh, it's very smooth, well-constructed. Uh, it's a, about half plastic, half metal, uh, but the metal's in the right spot. It's got uh, three-way brakes on it. It's got, you know, magnetic brake, uh, centrifugal brake, and then the tensioner too. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty smooth. I think it's 11, 10 plus one, 11, no, 11 plus one ball bearings. This one is a uh, seven to one gear ratio. I got 20 pound braid on it. Um, I think I got a new Cinco rod. Uh, I like the tip. Really? I like the That's why I see what you're going to put on that for the trip. Yeah, yeah, I think I well for the trip, I don't know. I'll probably I might pitch with it. Uh, but right now you can see what I got on there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, the but, Pringle Cinco. Yep. Is it, it skips well uh and super sensitive. That's why I think I might use it as a Cinco rod because it's it's super sensitive. Um and I think the micro guides, you know, if you guys skip much, um that's they, if you're gonna backlash, that's the place you're gonna do it when you slam it off a dock or something or duff it in the water short. That's the place you're gonna backlash at. Um, but I think the the little micro guides help with that a lot too. Uh, but super sensitive and super light. I, I like it. I think it's gonna be my new my new stick bait rod. Yeah, I think I'm gonna copy catch you and uh, get one of those Royales. I want to try to get some kayak rod bass fishing kayak rods together. I mean. Uh, Nothing. That I'm, not, I'm not saying that my Vexens and my Lou's aren't tough. It's just I got a lot more money involved in them. Whereas a uh, $36 casking, if it falls in the dirt or something like that, you know, it's like, oh well, blow it off. And if it dies, I'll just get another one. Versus a uh, $100 Lou's yeah. beat spool. I, um, I don't my whenever I'm you know trying to unhook a fish or something, the rods over here and crap like that. I dump my kayak reels in the water all the time. Right. See, I want to take your. Uh, Copy you. It's about except for the bait cast reel. I got a cast king spinning reel. Uh, this is the Centron. Centron. This is the 2000 series. I think I, I was asking you the other day about what's what kind of rods Walmart has or the cheapest rod Walmart has. Um, go there. There's a lose. I think they got for like forty seven dollars. And I'm gonna put this on on there because I do not want to take my Fluger president. Uh, kayak fishing so we're going to try this out so me and Bubba will be kind of doing an unofficial review of uh, Casking Spin Reel and him the Casking Royale and I'll probably put 20 pound braid on this and a uh, like a 10 or 15 pound fluorocarbon leader try to get those little swannies I think that'd be a fun fight on a spinning rod with a little 4 inch crawl yeah, it's, uh, this is a trend I hope to see in bass fishing. What they advertise it as is, you know, cutting out the middleman. You know, you see that in a lot of, if you've ever seen like how, what's Casper mattresses, you know, they, uh, they're they so cheap because they're they're not selling retail. They're selling direct. Well, Cast King's doing the same thing. They're not selling, you know, retail. They're selling direct. And that's how they advertise that cheaper price. That's, at least that's what they say. So far, it feels like it's good quality. I was telling, me and Joe were talking about this the other day. Um I like it better than the low end Bass Pro or a Black Max, and it's the same price. Um, you know, whatever the low end, I forget which which one the low end Bass Pro one is, uh, BPS one or whatever. But uh, I like it better than that, and I like it better than a Black Max. Uh, so for that price range, it it seems like it's better quality than those, and it's probably because they're going direct. Uh, Tim, what kind of rod and reel setups are you bringing with you on the trip, like for your kayak session? I'm glad you said that, and I just not posted it. Uh, oops, for my, okay, never mind, just kidding. 
All right, so uh, basically what I'm going to be using is I have a – all of my rods are going to be FX uh, custom rods. That's the name of the Extreme Angler Series company uh, that I'm pro staff with, and I'm going to be bringing crankbait rod, worm rod, um, nothing too heavy because, like they said, you know, the, the state record is 3.89 pounds, so nothing too heavy. Um, so yeah, just a couple of smaller things. I also have like a little spinner, uh, spinner bait rod I'm going to be bringing, but that's it guys. Nothing too, nothing too fancy. I thought about bringing a frog, like a, this, like a real small frog, just to have some fun and do some top water action. Like first thing in the morning. Oh, the so toads are coming. The toads are coming. Yeah. I know there was going to be some toad food. We're not going to catch any swannies, uh, that way, but if anything, I think, It'd be fine because the swannies, as the sun will get up, they'll focus some more in the bottom of those channels and get them closer to the rocks uh, where we're planning to find them at. Uh, swannies, like, they're not like largemouth. They don't really care for grass. They like to have uh, more of a hard sand, gravel bottom, and uh, be around the limestone and the rocks. Man, we did have five people. Now we're down to three. Guys, uh, shout out. Give us your name. Let's know who's here over there in the chat over on the side. You know, give, like, I mean, We know our bishop's here. I don't know if Scotty Outdoors is still with us or not. You know, let us know that you're here. Uh, we're nearing the end of our time. If you guys got any questions, you know, please feel free to ask them. If you, anything you want to know about us, you know, it, it doesn't have to be really fishing related. It can be boats, kayaks, rods, reels, anything. See, I told you, old Rusty's still here. Appreciate it, man. Now I know what the R and R Bishop stands for. Appreciate there it, you man. Go. Tim, no, you're not bringing your little sissy dog on the camping trip either. <laughs> no, I don't even like that dog. She can stay where she's at. Yakking with Sarah. I am so glad you're here because I know I joined in on a couple of your live chats. Uh, I'm glad that you finally were able to join in on one of our live chats. Guys, you know, we always talk about bringing a guest on the show, and we've been looking around. We were going to bring us a Canadian on the show, eh? You know, Musky Hans, they would have liked that. They could, they could actually have something to talk about because we don't know nothing about no muskies or walleyes, eh, other than the crispies of the north. So, uh, yakking with Sarah, if you're still here, and it's okay that you're late. It's better late than never. If you're still here, how would you like to be a guest on the show? Let us know over there in the comments. We might bring her on. She's uh, pretty good at this. She's doing a thing right now where I've been paying attention. She's going to every park in South Carolina and doing a video on every park. And there's, I think she said, like 52 parks, something crazy so she's gonna have plenty of content absolutely Jeez. yeah absolutely yeah if, uh we're definitely looking looking for some fresh faces other than our ugly mugs so yeah if, uh, if anybody's you know any of you other guys out there do any live shows like this or you want to be on ours give us a shout for sure we'll uh we'll bring in and talk about even if it's not local like he was saying uh, you're gonna have a canadian on uh you know i know we get a lot of viewers that aren't florida like us uh so, yeah, if you guys want to come in, we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about with us. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, uh, common ground between fishermen the world over, whether it's Florida Margemouth or muskies or, you know, something that we have no idea exists. You know what? So, I, I have an idea that I kind of want to share with you guys while I have all you guys on here. What would you guys think that not just like this little kayak trip that we got going on, but actually trying some other kind of fishing like musky, or, you know, maybe going up north for a weekend? We just missed it. We said we're going to try to go catch jacks or chain pickerel. <laughs> That's something we don't do every day. And good news, uh, Yakima Sarah says, sure, she'd love to come on the show. And now I'm completely jealous of her because she just left the classic. Oh, Why nice. don't they have Bassmaster Classics in Florida anymore? Oh, that's definitely a bucket list thing for me. I would love to go to the Bassmaster Classic. Uh, you can ask uh, Bubba earlier when we were getting ready to set up the show. I was watching the weigh-in live, and I was telling him, like, oh, man, Edwin Evers just weighed in this. And I, I got on my fantasy fishing team. If you guys are wondering what I'm talking about fantasy fishing, it's just like fantasy football. You go on the Bassmasters.com, and you go on fantasy fishing, and you pick what anglers you think are going to do well. And you're in points, and if you win that tournament, like you are the top of the list for that tournament, you can uh, win $500 in like a Bass Pro Shop gift card. And if you win for the whole season, like you're the top for the whole season, you can win a Bass Boat. 
So, Bubba, if I win that and we're entering the trophy catch, that's two chances for a bass boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, we, that, that would be real nice. So, yeah, we need to go catch some more, uh, some more big catch and trophy catch ones, get some more tickets in that. Yeah, that's another great thing about it. The uh, the FWC trophy catch program, they're uh, they're they're entering uh, everyone who gets in it, uh, X amount of tickets for 10 tickets. uh, 10 yeah, tickets every time you enter a fish, 10 tickets per fish for uh, 2018 Phoenix. Uh, so that would uh, that's we need to go chase some more big ones for that. Yeah, that'd be a nice upgrade. Uh, she said the class has been. This is the third time that the class has been at Lake Hartwell, and I know I'm, I'm freaking crazy jealous. They always go like there, or they go Texas, just Texas, Texas, Texas. I'm so sick about hearing about Texas. Nothing against it. I have family in Texas. I'm just tired of hearing about it. Come to Florida. We have Kissimmee. We have the Harris Chain. We have the St. Johns River. We have Lake Seminole. We have Okeechobee. I mean, how many more good examples do you need me to give you? Oh uh, yeah. Florida's got plenty of big bass, plenty of, uh, I don't know, say 11 pounders running around. Right. You're not going to get 11 pounder out of Hartwell. Not likely. I'm not going to see it. <laughs> no, I just messing with you, Sarah. I'm sure there's probably one in there somewhere. You just have to use dynamite. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why they don't come to Florida anymore. Florida's got tons of good fishing. Uh, but I think the last knows. time they came here was on the St. John's and Hank Parker won it. That shows how long ago that was. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But uh, definitely, uh, I like to go to Kingsley. I've been watching Mikey Balls. If you guys uh, are any fans of bass fishing on YouTube, I'm sure you've ran across him. He's like the punching king. But uh, here lately, he's been doing uh, long lining, where you take crankbait, you throw it as far as you can go, and then you even get on the trolling motor and go like another 100 yards where your spool just open and let it free spool out. And uh, I want to go to Kingsley and try that. He was doing that, and he caught a 49-pound five-fish bag. Good that lord, huge! That's like he averaged, uh, like you know, it was like high nines, low tens every time. Oh, is that that video that's been floating around YouTube that it's him holding up the two giants and it's like 49-pound bag? Right, that's him. He I haven't watched to, it yet. Uh, I haven't watched that right. yet. That's on Kingsley. No, it wasn't Kingsley. It's a public oh, okay. link he went to. He won't say the name on it, so I'm not going to say the name of on in here, but. Uh, we already know what lake it is, and we talked about doing a tournament there in our club. But it's it's just like Kingsley. It's a big, clear water lake. Or we're not a big lake, but it's just a big bowl, very deep, clear water lake. And I want to try that. Yeah, that's uh, that's like fishing somewhere between <laughs> Jacksonville and Lake George. <laughs> right, right. No. I, like I said, I know what it is. It's like. It's more uh, South Florida slash South Central kind of area. All right, that's, that's, that's how they were catching them. They were using 10 XDs, and they were long lining them. And I want to go try that in Kingsley. Maybe uh, yeah. we definitely got to look to see if there's a cold front, though, coming through before we go do it. <laughs> yeah, well, if, if there's not, there will be when we get there. Right, right, right. But, uh, yeah, we're definitely uh, like, okay, Tim, you want to do catch some other kinds of fish. Let's go catfishing one day. That's something easy when you got to take an airplane ticket to go do. You can go do something about, like that. It's down to Miami, and we catch some peacock bass. Yeah, definitely on the bucket list. I'd love to yep. do that. Um, I want to get you guys uh, out there in the swamp with me doing some gar fishing. Oh my god! I mean, I can. We can go anywhere to do that. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm down. Well, you know, honestly, I'm down. Let, let's just do a video all of us together about making or uh, catching something other than a bass uh we've done mudfish uh you guys seen not not purposely mudfish. if you want to purposely catch mudfish i'll bring you all up here to the saint mary's river and we will throw down and have the mudfish challenge see if anybody can dethrone the mudfish roundup champion right dethrone the champion aka Dennis outdoors. yeah uh, Sarah, just so you know, uh, since you're late to the party, uh, me, Tim, and Bubba have a video coming up. We're going on a trip this weekend where we're going to be camping and kayak fishing for Swanee Bass uh, out on the Santa Fe River. So I think you'd really enjoy that once we'll be looking out for that video. So a little kayak camping action. And it's not really a state park, but it's right up your alley. And if you like some awesome B-roll, check out my video. Tim, you're like awesome when it comes to editing. Your editing skills are like crazy good. I don't know why you don't have more subscribers than you do, but you are starting to build them pretty fast now. You're starting to get up there. 
Yeah, I think I'm at like 350. I ran into a kid today when I was actually fishing, and uh, he knew who I was, and he knew who Apex Bass was, he knew who you were. So I was like, oh, shoot, this is kind of cool. First time getting yeah. noticed. Have you guys ever got noticed? I, I wanted to know. If you guys the ever- only time I usually get noticed is that uh, I've got noticed at boat ramps. I want to pull in the kayak and now the truck. I don't think I've ever got noticed with a – yeah, I did get noticed one time with the bass boat. He's like, yeah, I know who you are. And I said, oh, well, I appreciate you watching the show. And he was uh, out fishing for bluegill. I was too. And he's telling me like how he catches them. Uh, I get noticed a lot on Hexer Drive because uh, I'm sure you guys know all last like 2016, I was really big into saltwater fishing. And I joined the bass club and saltwater kind of took a little bit of a backseat. But now that I'm uh, going to be home, this summer, I really hope to get into saltwater fishing. There's definitely going to be shark fishing. Most definitely going to be shark fishing. I have two goals. One, uh, there's a place here called Simpsons Creek. Really small creek. You can throw a rock across it. It's so small. And I never knew there were sharks in there until I hooked a spinner shark. And, of course, the GoPro wasn't on, even though I thought it was. I want to go back there with the right gear, and I want to catch a shark out of that creek. And, uh, two, I want to do some land-based shark fishing and take you guys with me. Hopefully, or at least one of y'all. Get Tim on a uh, nice six foot black tip off out in the surf. That'd be Once awesome. Again, that, um, and I want to do deep sea fishing while I'm down here in Florida. I think that'd be really fun too. We can do that. I got to get the big boat out. Like I said, I'll be home this summer to do all that. I want to get out and go get some kingfish. Uh, once again, I'm jealous of Sarah because she met Zoffinger, the guy who inspired me to start kayak fishing. I watched all of his videos back when he had the red kayak and doing all the do it yourself stuff. Oh, yeah. Before he uh, started living on the boat. Oh, man. I would love to meet him one day. Yeah, and he she, seems like she a got to meet him at the Pelican. She got to meet him at the Pelican uh, booth. So, Sarah not only got to go to the Bassmaster Classic, she also got to meet Softinger. Yeah, he seems oh, like a real God. cool dude. Now we've got to bring her on the show. If anything, just ask her how that was. Yeah, every time I get noticed, it's, oh, hey, you're the guy with the bullhorns. <laughs> well, it's you known for something. That's better than better be known for the bullhorns than anything else. Right. Yeah, you know, Marty, whenever he opens his place down there in Tampa, what's that, like a four-hour drive from where we are? Yeah. Yeah, if Tim's still stationed out here, we ought to go down there and go go hang out with him. Go put in the kayaks at Marty's place and go catch a snook. I have yet to catch a snook. Well, I, I take that back. I caught one in a cast net, but I don't think that counts. Right. And he, and he was like the size of my hand. So that would be cool to go down there and catch my first snook on Rod and Reel at, at Marty's place. That would be pretty cool. But, guys, we have definitely went over our limit here. We're at uh, 15 minutes over the top of the hour. For those of you that showed up, we thank you for the support. Spread the word about this Bay Shop Talk Live. Usually we do it the second Sunday of every month. Apparently next month we're going to have Yakin with Sarah on as our special guest. So you guys get to meet Sarah. We'll get to have her on here and chat with her and ask her about the Bassmaster Classic and meeting Marty. And I'm sure she's going to go back to the Bassmaster Classic uh tomorrow because tomorrow's the last day and also uh we can ask her you know what's what how's it going with the uh film and all the state parks so when this video is over guys and we're done live be sure to go back on here and leave a comment below it helps us out share the word we really want to grow this uh live chat and hopefully do it more more often like i said uh the only reason we didn't have it uh this past sunday is because sat you know i was down on lake okeechobee fishing a tournament but I'm sure Bubba and Tim would have handled it just fine without me. But I would have been jealous because I couldn't have joined in on it. So be sure, second Sunday, next month in April, dial in at 6 o'clock right here. Join us on Pay Shop Talk. I'm Dennis Moore Outdoors. We'll see you later, Bubba. Uh, yeah, keep an eye out uh, the coming week for, well, I guess next couple weeks for our trip, uh, kayak camping. And uh, I am 11 pounds, I mean, Bubba Outdoors. And I'm Tim. I don't even know my own name. And I'm Tim Kidwell Outdoors. Uh, all of our names are right here, so go check us out on YouTube. I mean, obviously you're following Bubba Outdoors or Densmore Outdoors, but here's my little channel. All right, later. Later, guys. Help Timmy uh, get to a thousand subscribers so he can start getting monetization. Help out the small YouTube channels. We'll see you next time. Take care. Remember, we do more in Densmore. We'll see you later. <laughs>